Good evening. Tonight, I'm going to tell you another strange and unusual story of the unexplainable which lies behind the veil. Tonight's story was developed from a report contained in the files of the Gloucester Historical Society. Like many others which I have come across in the course of my research, it involves happenings of which we've long been aware, but for which there are no satisfactory explanations. Captain John Elwood of Gloucester, Massachusetts, had been a long time at sea, but his first thoughts were not of his wife and his home. If they had been, perhaps none of this would have happened. Here's the log, Captain. Everything's in order, sir. Thank you, Mr. Elwood. The crew is anxious to leave, sir. Most of their wives are waiting for them on the wharf. Uh, indeed. The way they're behaving, you'd think we were months overdue instead of just two weeks. And they've likely heard of our trouble with the snakes, sir. Happy to see us alive. Uh, well, just the same, they'll grab their men by the ears and march them off to the paymaster before they start to kiss them. Ah, sir, some. There are all kinds among them. Is Mrs. Elwood out there? Oh, no, sir. The captain's wife is too well-bred to show her emotions in public. Indeed. I want you to do something for me, Mr. Logan. Uh, I have to go to the company's office to make my report. Will you see that my gear is taken straight to my house? I'll do it myself, sir. That's very kind of you. Tell Mrs. Elwood that I'm fine and be with her presently. Aye, aye, sir. Just put it anywhere here, Mr. Logan. I do appreciate your coming. I was so worried, what with the hurricane and reports of the plague. Oh, it wasn't the plague, ma'am. Oh? Well, just a lot of poisonous snakes that came aboard while we were in Florida. There was talk that some of the men died. Aye, two seamen. Three others were bitten, but we saved them. It must have been a terrible experience. We were finding snakes, ma'am, all over the ship, two weeks after leaving the wharf. Did the captain say how long he'd be? No, ma'am. Just said to tell you that he'd be along, presently. Well, best be getting his dinner. Yes, ma'am. Thank you kindly, Mr. Logan. You're welcome, ma'am. Good to be back, Barney. This place is more like home to me than my own house. Hey, we missed you, John. <laughs> What's been happening while I was away? Oh, now, let me see. Uh, the Clarowell, founded two weeks ago off the coast, nobody lost. Uh, the, uh, the packet from England was late again, <laughs> as usual. Yeah. Uh, I think that's about all. Things have been fairly quiet. Yeah. See, uh... How about those snakes, John? Uh, when are you going to tell us about them? As soon as I get something to wash the salt out of my throat. Oh, yes. <laughs> Bessie! Coming! Coming! And all of a sudden, there they were, slithering up the lines and the gangplanks like so many fiends of hell. There's hundreds of them, somebody yelled. See that they pay their passage before they come aboard, I said. <laughs> <laughs> Hi there, my pretty. <laughs> You're the one I've missed the most since I went away. You ought to be ashamed taking such liberties, and you a married man. Well, if I weren't married, would you still object? Ask me no questions and I'll tell you no lie. <laughs> afternoon, Mrs. Elwood. Good afternoon. I'd uh, like a bottle of that Spanish wine that Captain Elwood favors. I think he'd enjoy it with his dinner. 
Be supper more than likely, ma'am. Club's having dinner in his honor. But I'll get it for you. Nobody would have been hurt, but some of the fools tried stamping on the snakes with their bare feet. Excuse me, gentlemen. Are you by any chance spying on me? Oh, no, John. I only came... I know why you came. Go home and expect me when you see me. You may charge the spoilage to me, Captain Barney. My apologies, gentlemen. Shall we go home now, dear? You humiliate me in front of my friends. You spy on me. I'll never do it again. I... But I wasn't spying, I swear it. I only wanted to get a bottle of wine for your dinner. And the table, was that part of your affection? I don't know what came over me. I... John, all the time you were gone, I missed you so. I prayed for you. And when you turned your back on me, I wanted to strike out and hurt you as I was hurt. I'm so ashamed. Well, you should be. I'm sick of your explanations, sick of your apologies. I'm sick of you, Ruth. No, John. Leave me something. Ever since I married you, I've been trapped. And for what? The price of a ship that went to the bottom three months after I bought her. You needn't have said that. I knew why you married me. I knew my father's money made up for the fact that you didn't think I was gay and amusing like the other girls were. I knew my friends were laughing at me because they knew why you married. It made no difference. I loved you. I still love you. Oh, you're talking nonsense. No, John. Please hear me out. Let it alone, woman. You're digging up things that are best forgotten. No, I... I couldn't bear it if it were only the money. There had to be something else. John, maybe it's not too late. Maybe we could start all over. Oh, Ruth. John, I'm drying up into a bitter old woman. Help me. Please. Oh, unpack your things. Oh! What's the matter? A snake! And they get me. What? Oh. 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 John? It's all right, Ruth. The snake. He's dead. I killed him. So I've taken care of your hand, and the doctor will be here soon. I don't think we'll need him, though. I, I'm sure I got all the poison out. You saved my life. Well, there wasn't much else I could do. You could have let me die. Why didn't you? Don't be foolish. But you could have. And if you had, you'd be free. No more arguments, no more trouble. You could do as you pleased. But you didn't. You 
saved my life. Oh, John, maybe we can start all over. Maybe. Try to get some rest, Ruth. I'll get you something warm to drink. It's a lucky thing you were home, John. Snake bite's a terrible way to die. Well, she's much better now, and the doctor says for the little rest she'll be just as good as new. Hey, you're thankful for that, I'll wager. Oh, I can't wait to sail again. Always more trouble ashore than when you're at sea. <laughs> and I can't make any money just sitting here, much as I like it. Speaking of money, here's something that'll make you sit up and take notice. Oh. The widow Smith got a letter from London this morning. Seems an uncle died and left her 20,000 pounds. 20,000 pounds? Eh? He'd be a lucky man that gets her. He could buy any ship in the harbor with that. Too bad you're already married, John. You know, I always had a sneaking suspicion that uh, she was partial to you. Well... Drink up and let's have another one on the house. <laughs> hey, you're not still thinking of that money, are you? Oh. <laughs> it won't do you any good. You got one wife too many. Come on, have another drink. Oh, thank you, Barney. I don't think I will. I'm going to get back to Ruth. I've been thinking over what you said. Maybe what happened this afternoon is a sign for both of us. We will make a fresh start. Oh. Bye, Harry. I'm going to take you with me on the next voyage. I'll fix it all up with the owners in the morning. Oh. Oh, John, I love you for the thought. Are you sure you want me to come along? Why, of course I do. Oh, I've been very selfish about the whole thing. Seeing new places, doing new things, and you've just been left alone here in this old house. No wonder you were unhappy. Oh, no, it's not that at all. I love our house. Well, you want to come with me, don't you? Oh, yes, of course I do. But I warn you, I'm not very good on both. Huh? I get sick. Oh, oh <laughs> nonsense. A couple of days at sea and you'll be just like a regular old sailor. Besides, I want you to come. John, you won't be sorry. From now on, things will be different. Yes. From now on, things will be different. Have the carpenter repair the after deck ladder before somebody breaks his neck. Aye, sir. How are you feeling, Ruth? I'm much better, John. Good. I'm better. Good. The cook's made you some more of his special tea. Another calm day like this and you'll be completely well. I didn't mean to be such a burden to you, John. You've been very patient with me. Oh, nonsense. I should have brought you before. You've no idea what a comfort you've been. No idea how lonely a captain's life is. Oh, I should like to be with you as often as you'll let me. Mm, so you shall, my dear. Don't let your tea get cold. You know, I... I dozed for a while and I had the strangest dream. Oh, I hope it was a good one. Mm, yes. I dreamt this was our old ship. And instead of cotton, there was money in the hole. Well, I couldn't improve on that myself. We were so happy in the days when we had money, John. I find I'm thinking of them more and more since we left home. But when I'm well, things will be different, John. You'll see. Yes, yes. Yours! You're not very well, you... You'd better come and lie down and get some rest. I didn't mean to get sick, John. All right. I didn't want to get sick. I'm such a 
burden to you. I should have stayed home. I should have stayed at home. Try to get some sleep. You asked me to see you after my watch, sir. Yes, I did, Mr. Logan. Frankly, I'm very worried about my wife's illness. You've always been handy around the sick, and, well, frankly, I thought maybe two heads be better than one. Yes, sir. I wondered if... if you'd take a look at Mrs. Elwood, too. I'd be glad to do anything for the missus, sir, if I can. Good. I thought it was cholera. No, sir. It's like nothing I've ever seen. Well, if she's not better in a few days, we'll lay a course for St. Augustine. Aye, sir. And uh, you'll uh, enter a full report in the log, won't you? I will, Captain. I do hope she's better soon. Thank you, Mr. Lowe. Are we to St. Augustine, John? We hit some rough weather during the night. Slowed us up. Rough weather? I didn't even feel it. You were unconscious, I'm afraid. We must sit there soon, John. We will, dear. We will. Now try to get some rest. I have to go up on the bridge. Elwood. Sir, we're way off our course to St. Augustine. If we don't turn now, we'll... I'm well aware of our position, Mr. Logan. My order stands. We stay on course for Jamaica. But I looked at Mrs. Elwood yesterday, sir. She won't last that long. My wife and this ship are my responsibilities. She'll be alive when we get to Jamaica, I warrant her. As you say, sir. Get back in there. Liar. You brought me dead. Mr. Logan. Mr. Logan. You had enough poison to kill two people. No. You might as well know it now. I wanted you dead, and now you will be. You're an evil man, John Elwood. You'll be repaid with evil. You... Oh, 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 oh. John, you can't spend the rest of your life in mourning. You got too many good years ahead of you. I miss her, Barney. Oh. Of course you do. It's only natural, but you've got to start thinking of yourself. Ruth wouldn't want you to become a hermit. It's lonely without her. Uh, but at your age, that can't last forever. Uh, the uh, widow Smith has been visiting you, hasn't she? Yes, yeah, she's been very kind. She knows what it means to lose someone you love. She's a fine woman, John. I think she's got her eye on you. Oh, nonsense, Barney. I'd never think... Oh, I'll give you a year. Nobody expects you to wait longer. And John, it's time you got out of the house now. Think so? I do. Uh, we're having supper tonight in honor of a new member. Your old first mate, Logan. You've got to come, John. He'll be expecting you. 
Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm giving you orders. <laughs> now stop acting like a lost puppy. All right, Barty, if you say so. I do, sincerely. <laughs> now it's time for me to get back to the club. My Captain Logan. Congratulations and welcome to the club. Thank you, Captain. I haven't seen you since the inquest. I feel I owe you an apology. You were right and I was wrong. I, I, I should have changed course for St. Augustine when you wanted me to. Makes no difference. Now. But it might have. And you were trying so hard to help her, you almost gave me the impression at times that you thought I wanted her to die. Gentlemen, gentlemen, the food is on the table, gentlemen. Uh, oh. <laughs> You're the only one in this room? I didn't touch it, sir. I swear I didn't touch it. Look. It's exactly the same as when Mrs. Elwood did it. Twas her ghost, sir. Twas her ghost that did it, sir. Stop that nonsense. A thousand pardons, Captain. Uh, give us ten minutes, and uh, in the meantime, the drinks are on the house. Now, get out, both of you. You may come in now, gentlemen. It was the girl did it, gentlemen. Saints preserve us. It was her ghost. Her ghost. No. No. You fools, are you frightened by a superstitious servant girl? Barney Logan, help me, I'll show you. It's nothing. You're behind this, Logan. You're trying to trick me. Trick you into what, Captain? You think I killed her? You're trying to trick me into saying that I did. No, I didn't. I swear I didn't. I didn't. I swear I didn't. Captain Elwood, I think you'd better leave. Aye, he finally got a ship. If you could call it that. No other master would sail her around the harbor. She leaked like a sieve, and her crew, well, I wouldn't sail with them across, uh, across a mill pond. But it was all Elwood could get, so he took her. Captain Barney, gentlemen, have you heard? It's the Coberly. The Cope? That's Elwood ship. Aye, her crew has just been brought into the harbor. What happened? Nobody knows. They say that the weather was fair, and the sea was calm, and suddenly she just broke up. But her crew was saved. Aye. All of them, all except Captain Elwood. It's retribution. The devil has claimed his own. Gentlemen, the food is on the table. <laughs> Again. Here it goes. <laughs> The law demands an eye for an eye. He who takes a life must be prepared to forfeit his own. But the law is man-made. And when there is no proof, the law is helpless. Captain Elwood never came to trial. Nevertheless, he was found guilty and executed. Who was his executioner? We may never know. But an unseen force that can overturn a heavy table is not to be reckoned with lightly.
please join me again for another journey into the world of the unexplainable which lies behind the veil. Thank you.